Welcome back to the news today. Republican hopefuls gambling for the party's nomination for the presidency are gathering in Las Vegas for their final debate. Since they last met in November, Ben Carson has virtually collapsed in Iowa, and an unrepentant Donald Trump has outraged many and won the admiration of many with his call to ban Muslims from entering the U.S. With me here to discuss the upcoming debate are Sheldon Shore, spokesman for the American Democratic Party in Israel. Good, Hi, good evening. evening. And Dov Lipman former member of the Israeli parliament on the Ash Atid party. Good evening. Good evening. Not representing any American party. <laughs> Well, let's talk about representing American parties. Now, we know, Sheldon, that it's still a year ahead of the actual elections, but so far the line of candidates in the Rep Republican side has known a lot of ups and downs. Much of these ups and downs came after debates, which made a huge fuss. What can we expect the main focus of the debate in Las Vegas to be? You know, one thing, one thing that's shown with the debates is that theater is really important. It's not just the issues. It's not just what's good for America, who's a better leader. It's a lot of it is theater. Now, you have some serious candidates and some people who don't play down to the theater uh, but and don't act and don't try to pander to the crowd. Uh, I can think of some. I, as a Democrat, I'm not going to start complimenting the ones. But you do have the people who really try to grab attention, like, well, obviously Donald Trump, and it seems to be working because he's leading. Ben Carson is a nice guy, bright, good fellow, but he's not theater. He's not as exciting. He's not playing to the crowds, and his, and his numbers go down. The two people who are on the rise, or well, Trump has always been on top. The other one, and this is the one that I'll be looking for in the debate, is Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz is also one who is, tries to grab attention through playing and playing to the crowds, and like Donald Trump, engaging in demagoguery, frankly. And they are getting attention. And it's sad because both are really nasty people, frankly. They're not nice people. I wouldn't like either of them to be president. I wouldn't like them to lead the country. I don't trust their values. I think they're, they're, they're going for ego, for their own power. And they're the ones who are leading. And that's really sad and one of the reasons that I don't think I'm going to be voting Republican this year. Well, uh, Dov, uh, we just heard what Sheldon Shore said about Trump. It seems that even though a lot of people expected his comments, which were in many times outrageous, to hurt him in the polls, they have actually helped him in the polls. Is this a trend? Has he just opened the secret to successful campaigning that other candidates like Ben Carson have not uh, figured out yet? Well, the, the jury's still out in terms of what will happen in the end. You have to remember that amongst all the candidates that you'll see on stage, every one of them has a certain percentage of votes that are behind them. And the question is going to be, we're 50 days away from the first caucus, from the Iowa caucuses. Once those primaries start happening and candidates start dropping out, the big question will be, will, where will those votes go? And I think that as the candidates approach the debate tonight, especially, this is a critical, critical debate seven weeks before the caucus, that is going to be their major focus. It's not going to catapult themselves to over 40 percent to where Trump is. The question is, who is going to be there to pick up all of the pieces? And will we see people go from a Jeb Bush or from a Chris Christie and go to Donald Trump? I don't think so. And the question is, where will they go to? Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio, they're going to be the ones that are going to be fighting to try to gather those. Rubio might be better positioned to get the mainstream Republican votes, but as Sheldon said, Ted Cruz has been on the rise, and the key from the, in all of their eyes is those first few contests, because once the train starts rolling and people start seeing who's victorious, at that point, there's no way to catapult ahead, and therefore that's why tonight's debate is so critical. Well, the main issue in tonight's debate seems to be security, and speaking of Trump, it seems that uh, the issue now is not just Trump against the world, as it has been so far, but also Ted Cruz against Marco Rubio. Where did this uh, new um, battle come from? And Ted Cruz is rising quite dramatically. Yeah, well, look, you have the, the Republicans are really divided, I think, into at least three groups, one of which is, you know, the the, the flashy candidates, the ones that, that make noise, you know, like, like the Donald Trump. You have the serious candidates, those who have served in public office and have gone there, and some really out, wild outsiders, the Carly Fiorona, the, uh, the, the, the Ben Carson, and of course Trump uh, is in there. Of the serious candidates, the ones that are doing better are Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz. So I think that one of the interesting things is going to be there, and you also have a, a group of people who are extremely right, 
like Ted Cruz, and you have a group of people who are moderate, uh, like Rubio. Somewhat, and, and the thing is that Rubio seems to me someone, because he's closer to the middle, would be more acceptable to the country if he were the nominee, whereas someone like Ted Cruz is more acceptable to the party and has, and has a good chance of being elected, uh, nominated by the party, but not to do as well as this. Now, the Republican Party has in the past done this many times, that they've elected, they've nominated Barry Goldwater in 1964, someone who represents the views of the party and someone who's unacceptable to the country. So what were they going to do this time? Are they going to choose someone who's acceptable to their views and therefore lose? Last time, they tried Mitt Romney, who they did not like. And he lost. So they say, maybe we should be more truthful to our own things. Or maybe someone with flash, like Donald Trump, who is exciting. Maybe he will do this. The party is in disarray. And I, I, you know, I'm, I'm just sitting back and watching this with some amusement. Well, speaking of flashy candidates, someone who was flashy for quite a while was Chris Christie. What yeah. happened there? Where did he go? I don't know. He's, uh, he, I think he's a very talented guy. He's very bright and he's very good. But he's fallen to the second row. He's not going to be there. I don't uh, think he's going to be there although tonight. He actually, this is important. There's a development which has just happened. He yeah. actually made it into the top oh, he made tier. Made it to the top tier. He's okay. polling number two in New Hampshire right now, and that relates to your question about security. The the moment national security becomes the focus, he is. He was a federal prosecutor after September 11th. He right. has credentials. He's packing auditoriums in the original in the first few states. It's going to be very interesting to see if he has the ability once he's on that stage to make that kind of an impact uh, tonight. He, in the previous debates I've seen, I've been very impressed uh, by what he's had to say. He does not get caught up in all the craziness. Says things to the point. And like I said, people will be watching him tonight as well. He's now made it into the top tier. And will he be able to emerge even further through the course of the debate? Well, some say Donald Trump, who's shining a lot now, will be irrelevant when the actual election comes. But they've said this before. Right. They've said this about him in the follow in the past few months, several times, and yet he keeps on rising. Can we hope, say, estimate that by the real elections next year, there will be no more Donald Trump? The, the one thing that could stop Donald Trump is those first few contests. If Iowa, New Hampshire, and if state after state he doesn't win, then at a certain point he'll still stick with it. And he has the money in his own personal bank account to stay there. But at that point, that's the only possible way. So these individual candidates are going to try to rise to the top and win in those states and hopefully knock him down in that way. But like you said, I, I mean, I've sat here in this chair and I've said scandal after scandal, he's finished and it hasn't happened. And therefore, I'm not going to say it anymore. It's not going to be a scandal that will bring him down. It will only be his lack of victories in those first few states. And even then, he's going to stick around. He's going to fight until the end. And the question is going to be, who's going to be head to head? The question, I do agree with Sheldon, will Republican voters take a step back and say, who's our best candidate to defeat uh, Hillary Clinton? And in all the polls, the one person right now who has the best chance to do that is Marco Rubio, for sure. He's the one who consistently either is neck and neck with her or actually defeats her in national polls. The rest do not have that uh, ability against her, and that'll be the question. Do they go towards the base, or do they say, we want to actually win the White House? I will say, Jeb Bush, according to all reports, has canceled all his uh, events the last few days and has been focusing just on this debate. That gives you a sense for how much this particular debate uh, is of importance, especially for those single-digit candidates. I think, uh, I think yeah. also, as you mentioned about Donald Trump, you know, Quite, there is a theory that the people who got involved in the, in the whole process, the political process, at the beginning are not the serious people. Uh, kids or like, you know, so, so amateurs, the real politicos, the real people, many of the voters are just not getting involved in it. When you're going to get to the elections, when you get to the Iowa caucus, New Hampshire, they're going to make their voices heard. And that's why I think he's, uh, those points out. Here, Jeb Bush thinks this is right before the Iowa caucus, and he wants to present himself as a serious candidate, and he is a very serious candidate, and he hasn't done as well as he really should have. And uh, if he doesn't shine right now, he's got to shine tonight. One word. Who's going to win this debate tonight? It depends what the, what the attack is. You see, I'll tell you, they have two problems. One problem is someone flashy like Ted Cruz, right? He's exciting, even though I think he's he's a dreadful person and he's a dreadful candidate. But he's exciting and he drags a lot of things. Will they be focusing? Will the other people start attacking Ted Cruz like they used to attack uh, this, or are they going to attack Hillary Clinton? Who's the bad person here? 
And if they start turning on Ted Cruz, you know, it might be interesting. I think you're going to see Trump Trump I think you're going to see Trump and Cruz go get, go at it against each other, giving Rubio and Chris Christie the chance to shine. And we'll see what the polls have to say after. Right, there's an element of yes. statesmanship that the other people, by standing on the side, can. Yes, we'll certainly take you both for your word and have you back here again to discuss it, gentlemen. Thank you very much for being Pleasure. with thank me you. tonight.